Hello YouTube! Sorry I haven't posted in a while, I've had a lot going on IRL and had trouble finding the time to sit down and draw, write, record, edit, and all of the other things one does to make a YouTube video. I was also planning on the next character I draw being Aisha, but when I was writing the script I realized there's a lot of plot things I want to put in her video and I don't quite know how to structure it yet. There are also some elements of that plot that I haven't totally nailed down yet, and I want to get it figured out before I commit to it in video form. But that's okay. We'll get to her video eventually. Um, for now, I've decided to go in the order of introduction for the girls, which means that this video is about Flora. Everyone knows Flora as being sweet and patient. She's the mom friend of the Winx Club, basically. I've seen people characterize her in the same way they do Fluttershy from My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, but I don't see her as being as shy or meek as Fluttershy is. She can definitely be soft-spoken, um, but she's assertive when she needs to be. She won't call you out in the heat of the moment in the same way that Bloom or Musa will, or roast you like Stella. Uh, instead, she'll give you like a, a very in-depth and personal lecture about your behavior. Flora is observant and she remembers details, so she's also an older sister. Shout out to all of the fellow eldest daughters in the crowd tonight. I think that in this reboot, Flora would be more interested in science and we would see her like doing experiments and messing with her plants and, and pumpkin murder and I think her and Murda would stay friends um, after that as well. They, they're both the more like grounded and thoughtful friend in their group and I don't know, maybe I'll talk more about Murda in another video probably. Anyway, Flora has the best grades out of everyone in the Winx Club and definitely takes school the most seriously, much to Stella's annoyance. Um, Flora is the perfect roommate for Bloom basically, especially like as Bloom is a newbie to the world of magics and being a fairy. The two of them are very close, obviously. A lot of people, myself included, seem to split the winks into two smaller friend groups. Um, group A is Bloom, Stella, and Flora, and group B is Tecna, Musa, and Aisha. All of the girls are friends, of course, but I think this is just something that tends to happen with largest friend groups like this. But I think I would put more emphasis on Flora's friendship with Stella rather than them both being connected to Bloom. They actually have a lot in common, especially in my rewrite, so yeah. Before she began attending Althea, Flora lived with her parents and her younger sister Miele in a relatively small town called Linfea. Here, there's also a nature preserve called Linfea Garden. Both it and the town are named after its founder, a plant fairy who was the first to tend the garden and understand all of its magic. This town is actually not too far south of the school, though they are separated by forest. In fact, this part of Solaria is pretty heavily forested. There's also two large lakes nearby, um, one on the east, one on the west. So, all of this means that the only visitors the town really gets are people traveling north to the school, south from the school, or those going to the lakes. I actually drew a map of all of Magics, by the way, for future reference. But, um, as I mentioned, Flora's hometown is also the location of Linfea Garden, which is a very important place for the world of Magics, though Many people either do not know this or don't believe the story. Because of the significance of this garden, every girl born in the town becomes a fairy. Many assume it's because they have a strong connection with nature, though a few, including Flora, believe it's because of their proximity to the garden. And they're right, but I'll get to that in a bit. First, I want to discuss Flora's role as Guardian Fairy of Linfea Garden, because 
because of the phenomenon that I just touched on, Flora was able to be chosen as the future guardian fairy at only age 12, before her wings had ever even materialized, as it was pretty much guaranteed that they would. Um, quick side note, when the story begins, Miele is 12. I know her age is like inconsistent, but I'm making her the same age Flora was when she got her apprenticeship. The previous guardian fairy was quite old when she took on training Flora, um, but she had felt compelled not to choose a replacement until she found the perfect person for the job. At the time of the story's start, Flora's mentor had unfortunately passed away. However, she had given her apprentice a comprehensive education regarding all of the plants within the garden. As guardian fairy, Flora would have to know all of their properties, magic or otherwise, as well as be able to tend to their needs and know their location. She would also find herself leading a few acolytes that live on the grounds with her, though she's already well acquainted with them from studying there. These people are the ones tending to the garden while she's at Althea. Flora also has a diplomatic role in her future as she would be leading educational tours of the garden for visiting tourists, as well as field trips for young students. In this reboot, fairies design their fairy forms themselves, and manifesting the form is a skill that they have to learn. Flora designed her form with her duties in mind, going for a sense of elegance and sophistication. Though she will be taking care of plants, She'll be using her magic, mostly, and not get too dirty. At least, that's what she thought. Since she's been gardening the old-fashioned way her whole life, she finds it comforting and relaxing. And I think a lot of the time, she'll end up showing up to class covered in dirt and leaves. Her fairy form does have gloves, at least, so that will be helpful. I think she would love to explain how her plant magic works in regards to science. Um, like if she fixes a wilting flower, she explains that she rehydrated it and increased its glucose levels or, or something. I don't really know plants, to be honest. But I do know that characters with plant powers are always crazy strong. All of the Winks are particularly strong fairies in their own ways, but when it comes to having control over all plant life and being from Linfea and guardian of Linfea Garden, Flora would be a powerhouse, stronger than even she knows, as there is a reason the garden is so important and needs to be protected. It has to do with magic's creation myth. The story goes, once upon a time, a glorious cosmic dragon comes to find that she is pregnant. She is filled with feelings of love and joy, and suddenly a feeling that she's not accustomed to. As she drifts gracefully through space, she worries. In the cold darkness that surrounds her, how will her child feel warmth? And so, she finds the most brilliant star she can, and she creates a world to lie in its orbit. Upon landing on this new planet, she worries, what will her child eat? And so she creates the garden around her. She worries, will my child be lonely? And so she creates animals. But these animals, they can't speak or laugh or cry. So she creates people. With this, she feels content, and tired from her work, she takes a nap. However, when she awakens, she sees her creations have spread far and wide, and the world is teeming with life. She's happy her creatures are thriving. However, she sees the dangers of this new world. As she worries for the safety of the baby dragon within her, She's approached by several young women. We see your worries, one said. And another added, You created us, and we cannot thank you enough for our lives, so we would like to help you protect yours. 
the mother dragon felt tears of relief come to her and granted the women a connection to her magic. Thus, the first fairies were born amid the beauty of her garden. That first fairy who spoke became the guardian fairy of the dragon flame, and the second became the guardian fairy of Linfea Garden. It is said that that is why a fairy gets her wings in her mid-teens, as that was the age of the young ladies in the myth. However, as the world of magics moved towards modern times, many began to doubt the legitimacy of their creation story. The title of Dragonflame could purely be symbolic for all they knew. And, as so much time has passed since the fall of Domino and the disappearance of the last wielder of the Dragonflame, the final evidence of the story's truth was gone, and most think the story is nothing more than a tale to put children to bed. But we know that she was real, and the successors of the first fairies are roommates. The caretaker of the garden still protecting the fire that burned in a mother dragon's heart. Plus, it adds a fun little extra piece of serendipity to Bloom's hometown on Earth being called Gardenia. I think that Flora wouldn't know all of this is true until Bloom started doing her digging into her past. And she wouldn't know that the mother dragon's egg still lays in that garden unhatched and growing until she finds a secret letter from her mentor magically sealed until she turns 18. So there is our first real juicy bit of lore for this hypothetical reboot cartoon. I have lots more ideas for this story so if you enjoyed the video subscribe. Um, I think the next Winx we will see is Tecna. So yeah, I'll be doing her next. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Bye!